Yo, what is up guys, Dream here, and in today's video, I'm going to take you through everything you need to know about the Arc Nemesis League, as well as give you one of the most powerful, low maintenance, simple recipes you can possibly complete to make absolutely stacks of currency. But first, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content, and if you enjoy this video specifically, make sure to give it a thumbs up, it would seriously help me out. But without further ado, let's get into it. So first, I'm going to bring everyone up to the same speed, make you all pros at the Arc Nemesis League, and then we'll get into the money making strat. So, Arc Nemesis, you encounter it from Act 1, and it is well worth your time. All the way from you starting out in the beach, all the way up to endgame and red maps. This is an absolutely insanely rewarding mechanic. You even don't really need to know how to interact with it very much to get a ton of loot from it. If you're in the early acts, you can cheese yourself a very easy tabula uh, with a limited drop pool in the coast by doing unique Arc Nemesis mobs. Uh, and you're probably going to get some pretty good uniques out of that, potentially a tabula. With multiple people reporting getting multiple tabulas, it's a high likelihood. Okay, but let's talk basics of the mechanic. So Arc Nemesis is a league where essentially as you slay rare and magic monsters, there's going to be Arc Nemesis components that drop on the floor, and you can pick these up. So these mods, essentially when you pick them up, will go into an imaginary inventory, which you're able to access either by going up to an Arc Nemesis node, which you'll find multiple around your map, and clicking on it, you'll see your inventory, or by hitting the designated hotkey on your uh, keyboard. So for me, it's colon, uh, which you can see here. This is like the colon key. Uh, if it's not that for you, you can take a look at your keybinds, scroll down to Arc Nemesis inventory here, and check what it is or set your own desired key. Uh, this is going to be pretty important as you're definitely going to want to know which mods you have on hand and which ones that you can gain access to. Okay, so the lead mechanic overall, you're going to have access to these altars in your map and you're essentially going to allow yourself to put on four Arc Nemesis mods and build your own monster, similar to Metamorph, uh, in your map. And each time you fight it, it's going to get more powerful and yield more results. Okay, so let's break it down real quick. So you're coming up, coming up to an altar and you've got a bunch of Arc Nemesis mods. What you're looking for here primarily is to look for a loot type which interests you first and foremost. So for example, if I wanted to get some essences, I could chuck on an arcane buffer here. It's going to have its own unique battle effects. Uh, but the main thing here is that you're looking for a reward type which you like. So this one's got essence on. I can chuck that on and boom, I will now get an essence drop from this monster. And in terms of the actual drops, it's about on the level of getting a delirium tile worth of that reward if that makes any sense to you. So if you got an essence one, you're going to get more than one essence. You're going to get a few essences, which is pretty damn great. Okay, so if I fight this monster now, I'm going to get a few essences and I'm going to slay it and that'll be pretty damn good. Now, of course, I mentioned that you can do four altars in here. So the next time you go up to another altar, you can come over here and you can bust out the thing and you can put a further modifier in here. And the catch is you're actually going to get the same modifier that you got here, reward again, as well as the next modifier that you got as well. And you can do this up to four times with it getting increasingly difficult every time and getting additional modifiers every time. So overall, the general rule of thumb here is that you wanna put your best and most favorite reward in first. So if you get like one which is like double currency or something like that, double fossils, put that in first. Because if you complete all the encounters, you're going to to get that reward four times over and that's the general rule of thumb you want to follow and when you're interacting with the mechanic on the most basic level this is going to yield you the best results pretty damn good so as i mentioned you can complete it up to four times and you can get some pretty damn good loot just from that alone and if you're just doing some alpha go and you just want to interact with the mechanic on the most basic level this isn't going to be too bad but if you want to engage with the mechanic on a higher level well there are things called recipe combinations but first we need to understand the different types of modifiers so of course when you're mapping you're going to get a slew of different arc nemesis mods i think that there is about about 15 base ones which you can drop from random modifiers. Let's refer to these as base tier modifiers. So you can combine these base tier modifiers in recipes which yield higher tier, more difficult, but more lucrative Arc Nemesis modifiers. So for example, when you come up to an Arc Nemesis altar and you see any sort of these highlighted kind of, um, kind of borders here, that means that this modifier 
can be present in a recipe which you are able to complete right now. So if it's flashing, it means you should probably go for it and use it in this specific Arc Nemesis altar due to the fact that you can get an even more powerful modifier from the resulting combination. So for example, if I went with a vampiric one here and we quickly just do this so I can show you the combination, uh, we can go for this Arc Nemesis mod. So I got my first reward there, pretty great. So I got two fossils and then I come over here to this uh, altar over here and then I take a look. Okay, so see how this one is now following on the flash, uh, you know, on the following uh, altar. This means that it's ready to be completed and I can now put this next one, which is being recommended to me in and it will complete the recipe. Of course, just keep putting in the highlighted modifiers until it does complete and you'll be pretty damn good to go. So you can see here, it's completed a rejuvenating recipe here for me, uh, ready for uh, my use. And this is essentially going to be the backbone of getting really insane rewards uh, from the Arc Nemesis League. Now, of course, these recipes all require different base Arc Nemesis modifiers to complete. And there's even higher tier recipes which require you to combine already combined Arc Nemesis mods with other modifiers to kind of get even better rewards. And these different combined Arc Nemesis modifiers are gonna have very, very powerful effects. So not only do they boast um, some better reward tiles, so this one has currency, for example, some of them also have unique effects, which are gonna impact which Arc Nemesis mods you wanna put in at any given time. So for example, this one here says, rewards are rolled one additional time, choosing the rarest result. Essentially, if you were to put a currency modifier on here with this, which it has baseline, and you rolled a currency item and you got an alchemy orb, it would essentially roll it again, and you could potentially get an exalted orb essentially doubling the amount of currency you're dropping effectively for the purposes of getting rare currencies. So this is very powerful and it's also going to apply to all other things that you have on this uh, on this Arc Nemesis. So if you're doing an Arc Nemesis uh, and you wanted to roll, for example, rarer fossils, like you wanted to get more corroded and stuff like that, you could chuck on this specific modifier and it would actually roll those fossils twice, picking the rare result, which overall is gonna net you higher quality loot. Uh, and you know, if you're doing a Scarab one, for example, it could net you more Gilded Scarabs. It's a very powerful effect. Uh, and as such, it's pretty lucrative to combine your Arc Nemesis modifiers in a favorable way. Okay, so this is where it gets a little bit complicated though, because there's an absolute ton of different combinations and recipes that you can go after with Arc Nemesis. So we understand the basics of the mechanic. It's fairly simple, clean cut. Let's get into the more advanced things now, which is combining the different modifiers and trying to get what's called a very effective Arc Nemesis combo. So comboing is essentially going to use the most powerful pieces that you have at your disposal uh, in one big chain to give you a massive loot explosion. So I think I have a clip here from Twitch. Uh, this is going to be the combo I teach you later on. Uh, but this is one of the Arc Nemesis spawns from my specific favorite combo right now, uh, which makes use of a ton of different high tier uh, modifiers. So this is just one little bit of loot from one of the Arc Nemesis spawns. So I got an Exalted Orb, a ton of currency, uh, and a bunch of Scarabs. And that's the one I'm gonna be teaching you at the end of this video, uh, which is very easy to access. It only uses the first tier of upgrades here on the Arc Nemesis mods. Uh, and from this recipe specifically, I think I've run it about six or seven times now, I've already gotten about 100 Scarabs uh, and four Exalted Orbs raw, with a lot of people in my chat getting similar results. Uh, and at the very least, you're going to get a ton of currency as well as a ton of Scarabs, even if you don't get any Exalted Orbs. Uh, I'm not sure though, this feels pretty busted and I think they may adjust it in the future. Okay, uh, let's get into the more advanced stuff here. Uh, okay, so there's a ton of recipes, but how many recipes are we talking here? Uh, how many things are we talking here, Grimro? Well, I have made a spreadsheet with all of the different recipes. Uh, and I think it's important to have this in an easily digestible form, so you can kind of plan out your strategy here and which modifiers you kind of want to go for and which prerequisites you're going to kind of need in order to get to that Arc Nemesis modifier chain that you're looking to construct. Um, so overall, there is all of these modifiers which are based. That's actually a lot more than I thought. Uh, it looks like there's about 27 base modifiers. And you can see here, they have different reward types associated with them, with some of them being pretty desirable and other ones not being very good. But the first thing I wanna point out here is that there are a ton of generic, currency, uh, jewelry, and weapon modifiers on alpha. So if you're early on in the story, one of the most effective things you can do, and also one of the things that I did, was Chaos Recipe using the Arc Nemesis mechanic. It drops a ton of different armor, jewelry, and you can gain access to you know some early Chaos Orbs using that mechanic, just with the base level of Arc Nemesis modifiers. 
But if you want to look for some more powerful ones, Vampiric, for example, has Fossil, um, Juggernaut has Harbinger, Soul Conduit drops Map, which is Chisel, Sextants, and Maps, uh, which is going to be pretty great. And overall, it's going to be pretty powerful. Now, I've just mentioned something pretty interesting here, though, Maps. So there are some different breakpoints in which different uh, Arc Nemesis modifiers can start dropping. Now, I noticed a lot more of the powerful ones dropping in the later acts, uh, but Soul Conduit, for example, can only drop, uh, you know, towards the end of the campaign as well as in maps. Uh, and some of these Arc Nemesis modifiers uh, do have level restrictions on them. So, for example, if you're doing anything map related, uh, you know, or fragment related uh, or something like that, you're going to need to have 68 plus in order for it to drop any sort of maps uh, and, you know, currency and stuff like that. In addition to that, if you, for example, put a high level map arc nemesis modifier as your first tile and then you followed that up with something from the story like a level 53 um, you know essence tile as your second one uh, on the second arc nemesis statue it's not going to be able to drop a map as it's currently using the level 53 modifier you used as a base so make sure that you're using only high level arc nemesis modifiers when doing anything related to maps and you're going to be fine outside of that there is no restriction on what you're going to be getting from the modifier pool outside of the tier that you're in so for example if you have a map arc nemesis modifier and you get it in a t1 map it's 68 itemable but then you go over to a t16 map and you put that same t16 uh, so that same t1 arc nemesis mod in you're going to get t16 maps uh, from your arc nemesis modifier similarly if you take a t16 arc nemesis 83 map modifier um mod and you go to t1s and you chuck it in a t1 one uh, you're going to get t1 maps so the actual loot you get is based off of the map or zone that you're in uh, so if you wanted to do jewelry for chaos recipe and you had some modifiers from blood aqua so from um, like mud flats or something like that you could take those mud flats ones bring them all the way up to maps and chuck those mud flats ones in and get you know high item level jewelry ready for your chaos recipe meaning the arc nemesis modifiers you pick up in the story are well worth your time to hang on to and move on to in maps with and you can get some pretty good value if you've got some stored up. Not too bad there. <clears throat> Okay, so overall, there is an overwhelming amount of modifiers here, and of course, there's also an overwhelming amount of recipes that you can get involved in. However, not all of the recipes are created equal. You can see some of them have additional effects, like rolls, rewards, additional times, and some don't. But some of them have pretty extreme effects in terms of their rewards. For example, Temporal Bubble features heist and expedition rewards. The expedition rewards are stacks of reroll currency, and the heist reward is either road markers, contract or blueprints quite powerful now of course uh, each of these are going to be powerful on an individual level uh, but they're most powerful when combined here's where i'm going to teach you the most powerful recipe i currently know and it's going to be using um, kind of just singular combinations and i'm going to teach you it on the most basic level here now order is not specific for these recipes but it is specific when you're trying to form a big arc nemesis combo so for example if i wanted to create the assassin modifier here i would need the following components I would need a Deadeye modifier and a Vampiric modifier. Uh, and then I could put in the Vampiric modifier first or the Deadeye modifier first. It doesn't really matter, but they have to be put in next to each other. So for example, you couldn't put a Deadeye modifier in first and a Vampiric modifier in fourth and get the Arc Nemesis component, which is upgraded. You have to put them in next to each other in order to acquire that modifier. So you put in Deadeye and Vampiric, you're going to get Assassin. Uh, and then you can combine as you see fit. Essentially, all you have to do is have the components on hand and you're able to get the next component. And also you're going to see which ones you're gonna be able to do with the flashing highlighted tips. Uh, and it's pretty easy to see when you can complete the recipe. So overall, that's going to be pretty easy. So if you want to complete Assassin, that's going to be pretty easy. It's not going to be too bad. You can find any modifier you want here, and it's prerequisite, no problem. So it's not too bad. Let's talk a little bit about these combos, though. If you want to create the loot explosion you saw in the background here, here's what you're going to need, and here's what you're going to have to go for. So as I mentioned before, all of the things on this list uh, only require the base components, and they can easily be found in terms of what you're looking for here and what it can yield up above on my spreadsheet, which will be linked down in the description below. But let's get into it. So the combo order you're gonna to wanna to construct here is going to be mirror image on the first altar, 
Now, mirror image is going to yield you scarabs, uh, as well as make sure that all rewards are rolled two additional times. Uh, so already we're effectively tripling the loot we have. Uh, not effectively, but you know, in spirit, we're gonna get the best of three. And we're also adding scarabs to the pool. This is gonna drop one to two scarabs base off of the Arc Nemesis monster. Uh, and the next one we're gonna add here is Treant um, Swarm. Now, Treant Horde uh, is an Arc Nemesis modifier up here, which you can see you can craft. And this one is a little bit interesting. So Treant Horde, if um, I can quickly explain here, is essentially going to itemize all of the additional mobs that you see here around the Arc Nemesis statue. Now, overall, there's going to be a bound about, uh, you know, somewhere in the field of six to 10 mobs, which spawn with the Arc Nemesis statue here. Uh, and overall, you can itemize these with the um, Treant Horde thing. Essentially, what this is gonna do is add your chosen, well, your rewards to those modifiers. So if you, for example, had, um, you know, uh, just the Treant Horde, it's going to essentially give the generic reward type to all the monsters around your Arc Nemesis mob. So overall, you're going to get, you know, the Arc Nemesis drops, and then if there's 10 mo mobs around it, you're gonna get 10 more. So literally 10 times loot, it's crazy. Pretty damn good. Now what's interesting about the Treant Horde mod though, is it says monsters means, um, uh, uh, drop a randomly chosen reward type. It says randomly reward type. However, it's not random at all. It's actually only random among the reward types that the Arc Nemesis mob already has. So first of all, we have put Scarabs on there first as our first choice here. And then we're following it up with the Treant modifier, which is essentially gonna give us all those extra monsters and rewards. So those Treant extra mods are actually only going to choose their reward from the Treant Horde mod here, the generic reward, as well as the Scarab reward. So those extra modifiers, uh, uh, those extra monsters only have a chance to either use the generic reward or the Scarab reward. So each extra monster on there has a 50% chance to drop a Scarab now. And those Scarabs have a pretty high chance to re-roll uh, into Gilded Scarabs, which is pretty damn good. In addition to that, the generic reward, which the Treants normally drop, is almost always currency, and that currency is re-rolled three times to be more lucrative, which is going to give you a very high chance at getting a pretty good result from your combo already. Okay, so overall, those are the first two steps. Uh, now, it's important to note, if you're trying to deviate from this combo with the Treant Horde, uh, as you start to introduce other things, like for example, if you wanted to add in uh, like a Shikari Touched, uh, adding this in might sound pretty damn cool, uh, but as you dilute the pool of modifiers, for example, if you added anything in which had armor or weapons, that's gonna completely nuke the potential of Treant Horde, as those Treants that spawn with it are now going to have the opportunity to drop like weapons, gloves and stuff like that, which is not what you want. You want to make sure that the reward pool is as tight as possible and force those treants that spawn with it to only drop the best rewards and not the generic and trash rewards. So overall, don't deviate too much from the combo. We've tried everything. This is the most lucrative, uh, but this is the basic gist of this combo. So next up, we're going to use Assassin. Now, the Assassin modifier um, doesn't really have, I actually don't have one on hand here. The Assassin modifier doesn't really have anything too special about it. Uh, it's essentially just two currency rewards. And um, so overall, that's reasonably powerful though, as it's going to juice up your Arc Nemesis monster quite a lot, but it's also going to further force the treants that spawn uh, with the Arc Nemesis monster to drop better rewards. So now it's the, the mod pool for the Arc Nemesis um, treants to choose from is two currency, Scarab and Generic. So you have a 75% chance that your additional monsters are gonna drop a very, very good currency or Scarab uh, and only a 25% chance that it's gonna drop a Generic reward. Uh, so that's pretty damn good. We're pushing things in our favor and all those rewards are re-rolled by two times. So pretty damn good. And then finally, uh, our last one here is going to be Rejuvenator. So Rejuvenator is a modifier, um, which we actually created in this video, um, is actually one which is gonna give a further currency reward, further putting the trance in our favor, and it's also gonna re-roll the rewards an additional time. So we have a total of three currency rewards, a scarab reward, and we're re-rolling everything three times, yielding you a pretty high potential of getting some pretty damn good rewards. In addition to that, we have a ton of extra rewards from the treants, which we've slapped on there as well, giving you a pretty damn nice loot explosion and a very high potential to get some pretty damn good loot. So we've poured over all the possibilities, and this is pretty much the most effective way to make use of the treant modifier, uh, and overall, this is what I would recommend. So this recipe is so lucrative 
imperative though, that when you're actually doing regular mapping, I would recommend prioritizing your limited inventory space on trying to complete this recipe. Now, in order to complete this recipe, you're going to need a number of components. Now, I've listed them down here uh, just for a little quick reference in my spreadsheet, uh, the exact order that you need to put them in, uh, as well as which ones make these components that you need. So if you want to make the mirror image, which is a scarab one here, you're going to first need to combine Echoist and Soul Conduit in a separate map uh, and get that ready for uh, your use. Treant is made up of Toxic, Sentinel, and Steel Infused. Assassin is made up of Deadeye and Vampiric, and Rejuvenator is made up of Gargantuan and Vampiric. Now, in a perfect world, uh, you could get all of this done in a total of three maps if you have the components already, and then on the fourth map, you can do your big Treant combo and get some big loot. So as I mentioned earlier though, uh, the map tier isn't really too specific. You don't need to worry about anything like that. You can farm this recipe up in white maps and do it in reds, or you can farm it up in red maps and do it in whites. That's not going to impact any of the rewards we're getting here. Overall, the currency and the scarab reward type is not tier specific, meaning this is a reward type open to everybody and you can do this as soon as white maps. The rewards on offer are not limited at all outside of the mapping scenarios, so you can get involved with this as soon as you get in tier 1 maps. Okay, so you're going to need some pretty specific modifiers. Overall, it might take you a while to collect them, but if you keep your eye out and make sure you don't use these in any other recipes, you can be in store for a pretty big payday. Overall, try not to use any of these modifiers in other recipes, and try not to use any of your modifiers here in other recipes either, as it's much better to use these in this recipe other than any other as it is probably the most lucrative one we've found so far so overall if you're just doing the mechanic you can kind of play with the other pieces as you see fit and maybe discover something else which we haven't found yet there's plenty more to discover um but as it seems this is definitely something that you want to do on the usual you could even go as far as to filter out all the pieces not in this recipe if you're not too fan of the mechanic uh, and you could just get involved in this as this is really where the money is until we get into some more advanced stuff later on using stuff like shikari innocence and Abrath touched. This is the juice. It's the simplest stuff and it's going to give you the most bang for your buck. So overall though, there is a lot more potential to be had. And if you want to experiment, you certainly should. Uh, and you don't even have to stick to this either, but this does seem to be the most powerful, at least right now that we have discovered. So overall, I will give you guys a few final tips on the Arc Nemesis mechanic and some absolute crucial ones that you're going to need to make sure so you don't brick your map. So the first tip you're going to have is that make sure you're looking at the actual monster type. So the most dangerous monster you can roll any Arc Nemesis modifier on is the Katava's Herald. This monster has a projectile which is physical based and it also has... Um, a leap slime attack, which when it's combined with Arc Nemesis mods can be very, very deadly. Overall, you want to avoid putting any sort of Arc Nemesis mods on this at all costs. You never want to engage with this. So if you zoom in and it looks like a Kitava's Herald, definitely skip that statue and go to the next one. Um, there is also another one I'd make you aware of, and that is the Big Spinny Cage Boy. So the Big Spinny, Spinny Cage Boy has the highest life total of any Arc Nemesis mod, uh, and if you get any sort of defensive modifiers on there, it can become unkillable. So obviously we spend a lot of time putting these modifiers together so you don't want to get your big treant combo and then have the last one which is the juiciest be unkillable uh, and you also don't want it to kill all your portals and all of your xp either so those are the main ones i'd be careful of uh, but if you want to be really safe uh, it's kind of best to kind of go for one which is maybe like um you know like really easy uh like like an ape or something like that uh, or something like along those lines and you can maybe like zoom in and take a look so this one is a skeleton this is probably which i'd probably try and set up for my fourth and final one and that's gonna be way way easier easier for you and way way better okay so obviously uh, the next tip is going to be you're looking to organize your inventory in a way which makes sense to you so you know what piece you're looking for and skip over pieces that you're not uh, so you can see here i do have some like you know kind of order to the madness here so i've got all my steel infused which is one of the components for the tree ants and then i have all my toxic here set up on the right so that means that i'm missing just one component i can come in here and see what it is i'm missing sentinel here for the treant recipe, okay, not too bad. You can also search in here for what you're looking for. Um, so for example, if I'm looking for assassin, I can see, okay, I have, okay, I got the Deadeye mod and all I'm missing is Vampiric right now. I don't have that right now and that's going to be the limiting factor on whether I can do the treant combo. Uh, so overall, that's going to be everything I got for you in this video. I'm sure that we'll further min-max this to the insane, uh, but this is what I got right now for you. Feel free to play with the other components, not in the treant recipe, or if you want to play with it entirely, go for it. Maybe there's something even better. But well, that's all I got for you in this video. Hope you guys enjoyed and you get some exalts in your recipes. Until next time, cheers.